morning, y'all. <clears throat> Hope y'all having a good morning so far. Got some sleep. I'm 27. <laughs> sometimes I feel like an old man. Sometimes I lay down about 7, 8 o'clock. and ain't gonna front. People be thinking I'm crazy. Why are you going to sleep out early? Yeah, you get up and do what I do. You'll be going to sleep early, too. But God bless you. I know some of y'all got to stay up a long time. Got little children. Work or whatever. It is what it is. Hey, we're going to have them days and have them times. Uh, all glory all glory and honor and praise go to my Father in heaven. Lord Jesus Christ and the sweet Holy Spirit. Don't know honor and glory go to me. Got to give glory and credit to who is due. Yeah. Lord Jesus bless you. All right, dive on in like I always do. Take y'all somewhere first, though. It's a day by day thing, y'all. Nobody got it perfect, especially this brother right here. I'm 27. <laughs> it's hard for a young person to <laughs> find another young person trying to take God serious in the world that we live in. That's one of the hardest things to do. It is one of the hardest things to do. Young or old, no matter how old you are or how young you are. But we live in crazy. <clears throat> but uh, Psalms 119 verse 9 say, How can a young person stay on the path of purity? By living according to your word. Amen. <laughs> I like that. All right. Got your Bible with me. Psalm 16, 116, I'm sorry. <clears throat> We're in the book of Leviticus, Le Leviticus today. I ain't going to get too caught up. Uh, I told y'all I'm going to give y'all this and then we go into the book. But I'm going to explain the reason of God's law first and then we're going to dive on in. Y'all rock with me yesterday. God bless y'all. God bless y'all because it was a little reading. <clears throat> All right. Psalms 116, verse 1 through 9 say, <clears throat> y'all excuse me. Psalms 116, verses 1 through 9 say, I love the Lord, for he heard my voice. He heard my, he heard my cry for mercy. Because he turned his ear to me, I will call on him as long as I live. Amen. I like that. The brother said, I love the Lord, for he heard my voice. He heard my cry for mercy. Because he turned his ear to me, I will call on him as long as I live. The cords of death entangled me. The anguish of the grave came over me. I was overwhelmed by distress and sorrow. Then I called on the name of the Lord. Amen. Save me. Lord, save me. The Lord is gracious and righteous, and our God is full of compassion. The Lord protects the unwary. When I was brought down low, he saved me. <laughs> Amen. Return to your rest, my soul, for the Lord has been good to you. For you, Lord, have delivered me from death, my eyes from tears, my feet from stumbling, that I may walk before the Lord in the land of the living. <laughs> Amen. Turn with me to Psalms 18. David said, I called on the Lord. Psalms 18. <laughs> Psalms 18, verses 16 through 17. The brother said, he reached down from on high and took hold of me. He drew me out of deep waters. He rescued me from my powerful enemy, from my foes that were too strong for me. Amen. The brother said he reached down from on high. I was living the wrong way. Hey, I was on a rough, crooked road. <laughs> Isaiah 40. I like this. I was living the wrong way. David was too. Hey. Isaiah 40. Rock on me. Isaiah 40 verses 3 through 5. Says the voice of one calling in the wilderness. Uh, prepare the way for the Lord. Make straight. In the desert, a highway for our God. Every rough, every valley shall be raised up. Every mountain and hill made low. And the rough ground shall become level. And the rugged places plain. And the glory of the Lord will be revealed. And all the peoples will see it. For the mouth of the Lord is spoken. Amen. I like this. I was dead in my sins. We all got sins in our lives. Amen. I couldn't get out of the, the pot if I wanted to. Yeah, I'd have been placed, been found myself searching and wandering, walking in the dark. <clears throat> yeah, I was living dead in my sins. Amen. 
Ephesians chapter 2, verses 1 through 10 say, As for you, Brother Paul said, Ephesians chapter 2, verses 1 through 10, As for you, you were dead in your transgressions and sins. <laughs> Amen. I was. It's only by the grace of God. It says, As for you, you were dead in your transgressions and sins in which you used to live, and you followed the ways of the world and the rule of the kingdom of the air, the spirit who was now at work in those who are disobedient. All of us also led among them at one time, gratifying, gratifying the desires of our flesh and following its evil desires and thoughts. Like the rest, we were by nature deserving of wrath. But because of his great love for us, <laughs> I love that. But because of his great love for us, God, who was rich in mercy, made us alive with Christ. Even when we were, we were even when we were dead in our transgressions, <laughs> it's by grace and still is dead in our transgressions. It is by grace you have been saved, and God has raised up, and God has raised us up with Christ and seated us with Him in the heavenly realms in Christ Jesus, in order that in the coming ages He might show the incomparable riches of His grace, expressed in His kindness to us in Christ Jesus. Amen. For it is by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not from yourselves. It is the gift of God, not by works so that no one can boast. For we are God's handiwork created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. Amen. Uh, you can't earn God's grace. <laughs> it's a gift from God. I fall short each and every single day. Romans 3, 23. Romans chapter 3, verses 23 to 24 say, All have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, and all are justified freely. By the redemption that came through his grace in Christ Jesus. Amen. First John chapter 1, 5 through 10 say, uh First John chapter 1. My bad, uh, First John chapter 1, <clears throat> verses 5 through 10 say, This is the message we heard from him and declare to you. God is light, in him there is no darkness. If we claim to have fellowship with him and yet walk in the darkness, we lie and don't live out the truth. But if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus, his son, purifies us from all sin. If we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves when the truth is not in us. <laughs> I have sin in my life. I'm 27 years old. I know his things I ain't supposed to be looking at. I ain't supposed to be having sex until I'm married. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it's young for a hard person. <laughs> if you young, you don't know. <laughs> I don't mind telling you the truth. Who perfect? There's only one person who perfect. Verse 8 says, If we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. Verse 9 says, If we confess our sins, he is faithful. Yes, he is. And he and He is just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. Amen. If we claim we have not sinned, we make him out to be a liar and his word is not in us. First John chapter 2, verses 1 through 2 said, Brother John said, My dear children, I write this to you so that you do not sin. But if anybody does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous one. He is the atoning sacrifice for our sins, and not only for ours, but also for the sins of the whole world. Amen? <laughs> Love that. Nobody's perfect. In fact, if you got the Bible with me, turn me to Romans 14. I believe God so loved the world that he sent his one and only son. Nobody's perfect. I don't care what you got going on. Thief, robber, black, gay, white, straight. Nobody's perfect. I don't care what you in or what situation you in. People going to judge you. It's a lot of stuff. A lot of people going to judge you for how you are, what you do. Now, sin is sin. You can't justify sin. But the fact is, God still loves you no matter what. He loves you more than yourself. Romans 12, I mean, Romans 14, verse 22. Excuse me, y'all. Romans 12. <clears throat> I mean, I don't know why I'm, my speech messed up. Romans 14. I'm sorry. Yeah. Romans 14. Verse 22. The words say, So whatever you believe about these things, keep between yourself and God. Blessed is the one who do not condemn himself by what he approves. You hear that? Blessed is the one who do not condemn himself by what he approves. Okay? God has accepted you. and no need for you to, to condemn yourself. You know you ain't perfect. God, better yet, God know you ain't perfect. That's why he sent his one and his son, Jesus Christ. I fall short each and every single day. All right, I'm going to get to the word. I don't want to get you carried away, but we, we in Leviticus. And we about to talk about the, the law. And when 
people start talking about the law and this and that, people get a little touchy. So before I get into the law, I'm going to explain the reason and purpose for the law. All right? Because sin, people don't like to talk about sin, but you got to, more important, you got to understand sin so you can understand grace. Okay? All right. Uh, you rock with me. I'm going to explain this first. And then I'm going to get to it. Start with Matthew chapter 5. I know a lot of y'all ain't known. Uh, good morning, Kristen. I know a lot of y'all ain't known, but uh, God bless y'all. And when you get there, say amen. Matthew chapter 5, verse 17. <coughs> Let me see. Matthew chapter 5, verses 17 through 20 say, the Lord Jesus said, Do not think that I come to abolish the law or the prophets. You hear that? If someone tell you something about the law or something different, <laughs> you tell them the Lord Jesus said, Lord Jesus said, Don't think that I come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have not come to abolish them, but to fulfill them. For truly, I tell you, until heaven and earth disappear, not the smallest letter, or the least stroke of a pen will by any means disappear from the law until everything is accomplished. Therefore, anyone who sets one of the any therefore anyone who sets aside one of the least of these commands and teaches others accordingly will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever practices and teaches these commands will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I tell you that unless you, for I tell you, unless your righteousness surpasses that of the Pharisees and the teachers of the law. You will certainly not enter the kingdom of heaven. Lord Jesus said, For unless your righteousness surpasses that of the Pharisees and the teachers of the law, you will certainly not enter the kingdom of heaven. Well, the righteousness and the, uh, the Pharisees' righteousness was based on the law, <clears throat> and their righteousness wasn't righteous at all. <laughs> yeah, if, if you was considered righteousness uh, in the sight of men, then that's your own type of righteousness, what people still do to this day. Uh, people don't think they have a problem because they keep the law or whatever. Uh, well, turn with Matthew chapter 9. Jesus said, unless your righteousness surpasses that of the Pharisees, you're not going to enter the kingdom of heaven. Well, there's two types of righteousness. You got righteousness of God and you got righteousness of man, which people get off based on the law. And that righteousness is not real righteousness. Matthew chapter 9, verse 2. Got your Bible with me, turn with me real quick. Matthew chapter 9, uh, verse 2. Am I in the right thing? Bear with me. Because I am all... Well, I, I got I to gotta find it because I don't want to be... Y'all bear with me. Forgive me. Tell me Luke chapter 5. It's in Matthew too, but I want to find it real quick. Because obviously I can't. Matthew chapter 5, verse 31. It's the same thing. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. All right. Matthew chapter, I mean, Luke chapter 5, verse 31. I'm sorry, y'all. Bear with me. Jesus said, It's not the healthy who need a doctor, but the sick. I have not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. Jesus has told the people, Unless your righteousness surpasses that of the Pharisees, which can never be done, they don't have righteousness at all, you're not going to enter the kingdom of heaven. And in fact, Matthew chapter 5, verse 31, Lord Jesus said, It's not the healthy who need a doctor, but the sick. He ain't come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. Okay? If you're righteousness on your own standards, the Lord ain't looking for that. He's looking for sinners. All right? Who come into repentance. Turn over to Matthew 23. Y'all bear with me. It's people... Uh, Matthew 23, verses... 1 through 12. I'm a, I got to read this first before I get to the law and explaining the law. So I want y'all to understand. <clears throat> Jesus warned the people about hypocrisy. Because people do this in, 
in the churches and stuff. Outside too. Nobody's perfect, including me. The purpose of the law is just to show us sin in our lives so that we be, we can become conscious of sin, not to be hypocritical. All right? So I got to explain this. Y'all bear with me. Matthew 23, verses 1 through 12. Lord Jesus said, uh, Matthew wrote, <clears throat> Then Jesus said to the crowds and to his disciples, The teachers of the law and the Pharisees sit in Moses' seat. So you must be careful to do everything they tell you, but do not do what they do, for, th for they do not practice what they preach. They tie up heavy cumberstone loads and put them on other people's shoulders, but they themselves are not willing to lift a finger to move them. Okay, Everything they do is done for people to see. They make their flatteries wide and tassels on their garments long. They love the places of honor at banquets and, and the most important seats in the synagogues. They love to be honored with respect in the marketplaces and, and to be called rabbi by teachers. But you are not to be called rabbi, for you have one teacher, and you are all brothers. And do not call anyone on earth father, for you all have one father, He is in heaven, and he is in heaven. Nor are you to be called instructors, for you all have one instructor, for you have one instructor, the Messiah. The greatest among you will be your servant, for those who exalt themselves will be humble, and for those who humble themselves will be exalted. Okay, <clears throat> Man. let me just get to this. We're in the tour. We're about to we're about to read Leviticus and, uh, and Leviticus, the old the Old Testament based off of uh, hey, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. It consists of three categories in the law: moral, civil, and ceremonial. The moral law, the moral laws of the Mosaic law includes the Ten Commandments, which are repeated in the New Testament. The civil laws got to do with culture for living, and the ceremonial laws deal with worshiping God and ritual cleansing. Uh, Jesus fulfills them all. All of them were shadowed with Christ. Uh, Colossians two. Everything we about to read, y'all keep in mind. <clears throat> I want y'all to. I'm telling y'all this beforehand so y'all could. Get kind of an insight for what we uh about to read, and if you're listening to me and rocking with me, then you should see something. The Holy Spirit, hope you open your eyes up. Colossians chapter two, turn with me. <coughs> Excuse me. Yeah, everything, all the laws and stuff, they all point to Jesus Christ. Uh, Colossians chapter two, uh, verses sixteen through sixteen through twenty three say. Therefore, don't let anyone judge you by what you eat or drink or with regard to a religious festival or a new moon celebration or a Sabbath day. These are shadow things that were to come. The reality, however, is found in Christ. Do not let anyone who delights in false humility and the worship of angels disqualify you, for such a person goes into great detail about what they have seen. They are puffed up with idle notions by their unspiritual mind. They have lost connection with the head, Jesus Christ, from whom the whole body, from who, whom the whole body supports and supported and held together by its ligaments and signals, grows as God causes it as grows as God causes it to grow. Amen. Since you die with Christ to the elemental spiritual forces of this world, why then, why though, as you still belong to the world, do you submit to its rules? Do not handle, do not taste, do not touch these rules, which have to do with things that are destined. These rules, which have to do with things that are destined to perish with, with use, are based on merely human commands and teaching. Such regulations indeed have an, have an appearance of wisdom with their self-imposed worship, their false humility, and their harsh treatment of the body, but they lack any value in, rest in restraining sensual indulgence. Amen. <clears throat> All right. In the Old Testament, when the people sinned, God told them to sacrifice bulls and stuff uh, f as a sin offering. But the, but the blood of bulls and goats could never take away sin. But they did it out of obedience to God. Turn with me to Hebrews chapter 10. Uh, yeah, I bear with me. I got to wear my Bible out a little bit for these pages. Still a little sticky, like our right, Hebrews chapter ten verses one through uh, eighteen say, "I told y'all about we about to go into the law, and I gotta explain this to y'all so people won't get touchy and wonder why I'm talking about this." And then I'm going through the Bible verse by verse. 
I ain't picking points. I'm going to let God speak because God speak in his own way. <clears throat> All right. <clears throat> but I got to explain this to y'all. Uh, Hebrews chapter 10 verses 1 through 18 say the law is only a shadow of good things that are coming not the realities themselves you hear that the law is only a shadow of the good things that are coming not the realities themselves for this reason it can never by the same sacrifices repeatedly endlessly, end, endlessly year after year make perfect those who draw near to worship Otherwise, they wouldn't have to. They otherwise would they not have stopped being offered. For the worshippers would have been cleansed once for all, and would no longer have felt guilty for their sins. Yeah, but those sacrifices are an annual reminder of sins. It is impossible for the blood of bulls and goats to take away sins. Therefore, when Christ came into the world, he said, "Sacrifice and offering you do not desire, but a body you prepare for me." With burnt offerings and sin offerings, you were not pleased. Then I said, Here I am. It is written about me in your scroll. I have come to do your will, my God. First he said, Sacrifices and offerings. Uh, first he said, Sacrifices and offerings, burnt offerings and sin offerings, you did not desire. Nor were you pleased with them, though they were offered in accordance with the law. Then he said, Here I am. I have come to do your will. He sets aside the first to establish the second. And by that will, we have been made holy through the sacrifice of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. Amen. Day after day, every priest stands and performs his religious duties. Again and again, he offers the same sacrifice, which can never take away sins. But when this priest had offered for all time one sacrifice for sins, he sat down at the right hand of God. Amen. And since that time, he waits for his enemies to be made his footstool. <laughs> For by one sacrifice, he has made perfect forever those who are being made holy. The Holy Spirit also testifies to us about this. First, he says, this is the covenant I will make with them. After that time, says the Lord, I put my law in their hearts and I write it on their minds. Then he adds, their sins and lawless acts I will remember no more. And where these things have been forgiven, sacrifice for sin is no longer necessary. That's why we don't have to sacrifice no more. Uh, for our sins, all the laws are, all the laws we're about to read, uh, all the extra laws are based on the Ten Commandments, which Lord Jesus summed up in the two commands, basically. Uh, love the Lord your God and love your neighbor as yourself. In fact, you can't love God without loving your neighbor because it's impossible to love God who you have not seen and hate a brother or sister who you do see. <clears throat> well... I think I said that wrong, but I got the Bible with me, amen. Uh, all right, first John chapter four, verses 19 say, We love because He first loved us, amen. Whoever claims to love God, if anyone claims to love God, yet hates a brother or sister, is a liar. For whoever does not love their brother or sister, who they have seen, cannot love God, who they have not seen. I have never seen God face to face. I can't. It's impossible. <laughs> Unless he was to bless me, and, 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 I, and I'd never be able to see him in his truest form. It's too much for him. I, you can go outside and look at the sun. It'll, it'll blind you. That's something physical. Let alone God Almighty himself. It's impossible to dwell in God's presence. He lives in the light where no man can approach. That's why he speaks to us in certain ways. He sent Jesus in his last days to speak to us. And Jesus Christ in his, in his resurrected body. It's too much for us to focus on him. Lord Jesus said, Blessed are those who believe and have not seen. You see? Uh, but nevertheless, it's impossible to love God and hate a brother or sister who you have seen. Uh, where? All right. Two greatest commandments. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, and soul, and love your neighbor as yourself. In fact, he said the second one, just like the first one, you can't love God without loving your brother or sister. Now, the purpose of the law is uh, to become aware of sin. Paul said in Romans chapter 3, verse 20. Y'all bear with me. We're going to get there. I know I ain't even got to Leviticus yet and opened up the Bible, but I got to explain this to y'all. First, so people won't get touchy. And I gotta step on some toes. My toes, my toes get stepped on. 
But it's all Gucci. Romans chapter 3, verse 20. Uh, say, Paul said, <clears throat> Romans chapter 3, verse 20, brother Paul said, Therefore, no one will be declared righteous in God's sight by the works of the law. Rather, through the law, we become conscious of sin. Amen. You see? But now, apart from the law, verse, verse 21, apart from the law, the righteousness of God, you see, Jesus said, unless you're the righteousness surpass the Pharisees and the teachers of the law, you're not going to enter the kingdom of heaven. You can never, your righteousness, your righteousness alone can never enter is good enough. Where the righteousness that the people have, that God declares righteousness is based on faith. Abraham was declared righteousness because he believed God. God took him outside and said, look up, count the stars in the sky if you can. Abraham believed God and he credited to him as righteousness. All right. Just having the law don't make you righteous. All right. Verse Genesis, uh, forgive me. Romans chapter 3, verse 21 say, But now, apart from the law, the righteousness of God has been made known, to which the law and the prophets testify. This righteousness is given through faith in Jesus Christ to all who believe. Amen. There is no difference between Jew and Gentile. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, and all are justified freely by his grace through the redemption that came by Christ Jesus. Amen. Alright. Romans chapter 7. Uh, verse 7. Um, I don't want to get carried away. That was another day. Y'all bear with me. Alright. Alright. Yeah, I'm going to go there. Alright. And then I'm going to go to Leviticus. Y'all excuse me. Those y'all be all over the place. Y'all Understand something. Hmm. Everybody be in Leviticus uh, and explain we all have sin, fall short of the glory of God. Now we in Leviticus and the law, <clears throat> God gave them the Ten Commandments, but they about to get some extra laws because uh, the people were a little ignorant and uh, of what they were doing. Romans, Romans 3, no one uh, going to be declared righteous by the law. The point is to become conscious of sin. But we are ignorant and unrepentant and a little bit hypocritical. <laughs> Trying to live by the law is impossible. It was meant to see the error in our ways and to bring us to repentance and cause us to put our faith and trust in God. Amen. No one puts their trust in the flesh. Uh, Galatians chapter 3. Y'all bear we almost done. And then I'm going to get to the jump. I ain't in no rush because uh, we got plenty of time. Y'all got an L or something, whatever y'all doing, y'all do y'all and chill. I don't think nobody else will tell you that, but hey, that's all good, y'all. Got my cough. It's early in the morning. God bless y'all. Nobody burped. There was a man at the store. I seen him early in the morning one morning. He was buying beer. I don't care what you're doing. And he was still talking about Jesus. And I ain't just talking about lip service. You can tell about certain people. You can see it in their eyes. They just, they got a glow on them, man. I don't care who you are, what you got going on. Other people look down on you. Galatians chapter 3. God so loved the world. He sent Jesus Christ to die for his one and only son. He's, God loved the world. He sent his one and only son, Jesus Christ. That whoever believes in him shall not perish. Amen. Nobody perfect. God can speak and use whoever he want to use. He might just use you. Galatians chapter 3, verse 1 through uh, 29, Paul said uh, to the people, You foolish Galatians, who has bewitched you before your very eyes? Who has bewitched you? Before your very eyes, Jesus Christ was clearly portray portray portrayed as crucified. I would like to learn just one thing from you. Paul said, I just one question I just want to ask you. Did you receive the spirit from works of the law? I told you I'm about to read the law to y'all. I don't want people to get touched or whatever. Because by keeping the law, that don't make you righteous. Your righteousness, the law, is intended to show you your consciousness and awareness of sin. And it caused you to put your faith in Jesus Christ from here. Just from here. Faith comes from here. Amen. Galatians chapter 3, Paul said, you foolish Galatians. Who has bewitched you? 
Before your very eyes, Jesus Christ was clearly portrayed as crucified. I would like to learn just one thing from you. Did you receive the Spirit, the Holy Ghost, by works of the law or by believing what you heard? He said, did you receive the Spirit of God by the works of the law, by having the law, or just by simply believing? <laughs> did you, I'm going to say it again. Did you receive the Spirit of God by works of the law or by believing what you heard? Are you so foolish? After beginning by means of the spirit, are you now trying to finish by means of the flesh? Have you experienced so much in vain? If it really was in vain, so I ask again. So again, I ask, does God give you his spirit and work miracles among you by the works of the law or by your believing what you heard? So also Abraham believed God and it was credit to him as righteousness. Amen. Understand then that those who have faith are children of Abraham. Scripture for Saul. That God would justify the Gentiles about faith and announce the gospel in advance to Abraham. All nations will be blessed through you, the Bible says. So those who rely on faith are blessed, along with Abraham, the man of faith. For all who rely on the works of the law are under a curse. You hear that? As it is written, curses everyone who does not continue to do everything written in the book of the law. It is impossible. Don't you know? I will wear myself out. <laughs> I lose my mind trying to do everything God asked me to do in this book. You hear me? <laughs> but bless God. The law is meant to keep us in line and track. God's word is supposed to keep us in line and in track by simply observing and knowing his word is right. It says, uh, for, all, for all who rely on the works of the law under a curse, as it is written, curses anyone who does not continue to do everything written in the book of the law. Clearly, no one who relies on the law is justified before God because the righteousness will live by faith. The law is not based on faith. On the contrary, it says that person who does not, uh, on the contrary, it says the person who does, who does these things will live by them. Amen. Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law by becoming a curse for us. For it is written, Cursed is anyone who hung who was hung on the pole. He redeemed us in order that the blessing given to Abraham might come to the Gentiles through Christ Jesus. That by faith we might receive the promise of the Spirit. Amen. Brothers and sisters, let me brothers and sisters, let me take an example from everyday life. Just as uh, excuse me. Brothers and sisters, let me take an example from, from everyday life. Just as no one can set aside or add to a human covenant that has been duly established. Uh, so it is in this case. The promises were spoken to Abraham and to his seed. Scripture does not say, and to seeds, meaning many people, but, and to your seed, meaning one person, who is Christ. What I mean is this. The law introduced... 430 years later does not set aside the covenant previously established by God and thus do away with the promise. For if the inheritance depends on the law, then it, was, then it no longer depends on the promise. But God in his grace gave it to Abraham through a promise. Why then was the law given at all? It was added because of transgression until the seed to whom the promise referred to come. The law was given through angels and entrusted to a mediator. A mediator, however, implies more than one party, but God is one. Is the law, therefore, opposed to the promises of God? Absolutely not. For if the law had been given that uh for if for if a law had been given that could impart life, then righteousness would certainly not become oh, my bad. For if a law had been given that could impart life, then righteousness would certainly have become the law. But scripture has locked up everything under the control of sin so that what was promised being given through faith in Jesus Christ might be given to those who, who believe. Before the coming of this faith, uh, where am I? Yeah. Okay. Before the coming of this faith, we were held in custody under the law, locked up until the faith that was to come would be revealed. So the law was our guardian until Christ came, that we might be justified through faith. Now, now that this faith has come, we are no longer under a guardian. So, to, so in Christ Jesus, you are all children of God through faith. For all of you who were baptized into Christ have clothed yourselves with Christ. There is neither Jew nor Gentile, neither slave nor free, nor is there male and female. 
for you are all in one for you are excuse me for you are all in one i don't know why i messed my tongue up forgive me okay for you are all one in christ jesus the if you belong to Christ, then you are Abraham's seed and heirs to their promise. Uh, heirs to the promise. Uh, amen. <clears throat> if you belong to Christ, then you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. I'm sorry, y'all. All right. The law was given so that we can become conscious and aware of what's going on with our faith in Jesus Christ. All right, now I'm going to get to Leviticus. I'm sorry, y'all. I had to read that. It was only to do that. Yeah. I'll bear with me. God bless y'all. I'm sorry. No, I ain't. I had to do that. All right, Leviticus chapter one, the burnt offering. The Lord called to Moses and spoke to him from the tent of Eden. He said, Speak to the Israelites and say to them, When anyone among you brings an offering to the Lord, bring bring, uh, bring as your offering an animal from either the herd or the flock. If the offering is a burnt offering from the herd, you are to offer a male without defect. Uh, you must present it at the entrance to the tent to the tent of meeting so that it will be acceptable to the Lord. If you are to lay your hand on the head of the burnt offering and it will be acceptable on your behalf to make an atonement for you. You are to slaughter the young bull before the Lord and then Aaron's sons, the priest, shall bring the blood and splash it against the sides of the altar at the entrance to the tent of meeting. You are to skin the burnt offering and cut it into pieces. The sons of Aaron, the priests, are to put fire on the altar and arrange the wood on the fire. Then Aaron's sons, the priests, shall arrange the pieces, including the head and the fat, on the wood that is a burnt that is a burning that is burning on the altar. You are to wash the internal organs and the legs with with water, and the priest is to burn all of it on the altar. It is a burnt offering and food offering and aroma pleasing to the Lord. If the offering is a burnt offering from the flock, from either the sheep or the goats, you are to offer a male without defect. You are to slaughter it at the north side of the altar before the Lord, and Aaron's sons, the priest, shall splash his blood against the sides of the altar. You are to cut it into pieces, and the priest shall arrange them, including the head and the fat on the wood that is burning on the altar. You are to wash the internal organs and the legs with water, and the priest is to bring all of them and burn them on the altar. It is a burnt offering, a food offering, and aroma pleasing to the Lord. If the offering to the Lord is a burnt offering of birds, you are to offer a dove or a young pigeon. The priest shall bring it to the altar, wring off the head and burn it on the altar. Its blood shall be drained out on the side of the altar. He is to remove the crop of the feathers and throw them down on the on the and throw them down east on the altar where the ashes are. <laughs> He shall tear it completely open by his wings, not dividing it completely. He should tear he should tear it open by the wings, not dividing it completely. And then the priest shall burn it on the wood that is burning on the altar. It is a burnt offering, a food aroma, a food offering, an aroma pleasing pleasing to the Lord. Leviticus chapter two, a grain offering. <laughs> when anyone brings a grain offering to the Lord, their offering is to be of the finest flour. They are to put they are to put they are to pour olive oil on it, put incense on it, and take it to Aaron's sons, the priests. The priest shall take a handful of flour and oil together with all the incense and burn it as a memorial portion on the altar, a food offering and aroma pleasing to the Lord. The rest of the grain offering belongs to Aaron and his sons. It is a most holy part of food offering presented to the Lord. If you bring a if you bring a grain offering baked in the oven, it is to, it is to consist of the finest flour, either thick loaves made without yeast and with olive oil mixed 
thin or thin loaves made without yeast and brushed with olive oil. If your grain offering is prepared on the griddle, it is to be made of the finest flour mixed with oil and without yeast. Crumble it and pour oil on it. It is a grain offering. If your grain offering is cooked in a pan, it is to be made of the finest flour and some olive oil. Bring the grain offering made of these things to the Lord. Present it to the priest who shall take it to the altar. He shall take out the memorial portion from from the grain offering and burn it on the altar as a food offering, an aroma pleasing to the Lord. The rest of the grain offering belongs to Aaron and his sons. It is the most holy part of the food offering presented to the Lord. Every grain offering you bring to the Lord must be made without yeast. Yeast always got something to do with sin. For you are not to burn any yeast or honey in a food offering presented to the Lord. You may bring them to the Lord as an offering. Uh, you may bring them to the Lord as an offering of the first fruits, but they are not to be off, offered on the altar as a pleasing aroma. Season all your grain offering with salt. Do not leave the salt of the covenant of your God out of the grain offering. Add salt to all your offerings. Hmm. There's something significant about the salt, John. Because uh, Jesus said we the salt of the world. Every time you see something about salt, it got something to do with something. Something significant about that, John. I'll explain that to you another time. I think I explained a lot this morning. <laughs> But it's something significant about salt. Every time you see salt, the Lord covering the salt, it's something about that. <laughs> Season all your grain offering with salt. Don't leave the salt of the covenant of your God out of, out of your grain offering. Add salt to all your offerings. If you bring excuse me, if you bring a grain offering of the first fruit to the Lord, offer crushed heads of new grain roast, roasted in, in the fire. Put oil and incense on it. It is a grain offering. The priest shall burn the memorial portion of the crushed grain in the oil together with all the incense as a food offering presented to the Lord. Leviticus chapter 3, the fellowship offering. If you, if your, if your offering is a fellowship offering and you offer an animal, from the herd, whether male or female, you are to present it. You are to present before the Lord an animal without the fat. Anytime you you see some, he speak about bringing something without the fat. It's supposed to be perfect. That's why he, they want them to bring an animal some without the fat. They got to be perfect because there's a lot of animals that was messed up. It, it, the idea is you want something without sin. Mm. You are to present before the Lord an animal without the fat. You are to lay your hand on the head of your offering. You are to lay your hand on the head of your offering and slaughter it at the entrance to the tent of meeting. Then Aaron's sons, the priest, shall splash the blood against the sides of the altar. From the fellowship offering, you are to bring a food offering to the Lord, their internal organs, and all the fat that is connected to them, both kidneys with the fat on them near the loins. And the long road of the liver, which you will remove with the kidneys. Then Aaron's sons are to burn it on the altar on top of the burning offering that is lying on the burning wood. Uh, if it is a food offering and aroma pleasing to the Lord, if you offer an animal from the flock as a fellowship offering to the Lord, you are to offer a male or female without the fat. If you offer a lamb, you are to present it before the Lord. Lay your hand on his head and slaughter it in the front of the tent of meeting. Then Aaron's son shall splash the blood against the sides of the altar from the fellowship offering. From the fellowship offering, you are to bring a food offering to the Lord. It's fat and the entire fat tail cut off close to the backbone. The internal organs and all the fat that is connected to them, both the kidneys with the fat on them near the loins and the long road, long lobe with the leaven which you will remove with the kidneys. The priest shall burn them on the altar as a food offering and aroma pleasing to the Lord. If your offering is a goat, you are to present it before the Lord. Lay your hand on it and slaughter it in front of the tent of meeting. Then Aaron's son shall splash his blood against the sides of the altar. From, from what you are offering, you are to present this food offering to the Lord. 
the internal organs and all the fat that is connected to them, both the kidneys with the fat on them near the loins and the long lobe with the lever, which you will remove with the kidneys. The priest shall burn them on the altar as a food offering, a pleasing aroma. All the fat, uh, all the fat is the Lord's. That is the lasting ordinance for the generations to come. Now I don't eat. I don't eat a lot of the uh, stuff. I think people. I'm gonna get carried. Y'all, I'm gonna get carried away. This is the lasting ordinance for generations to come. Wherever you live, you must not eat any fat or any blood. Leviticus chapter four. Uh, verse 1, the Lord said to Moses, Say to the Israelites the sin offering. Say to the Israelites, uh, When anyone sins unintentionally and does what is forbidden in any of the Lord's commands, if the anointed priest sins, bring if the anointed priest sins, bringing guilt on the people, he must bring to the Lord a young bull without the fat as a sin offering for the sin he has committed. He is to present the bull at the entrance to the tent of meeting before the Lord. He is to lay his hand on his head and slaughter it uh, there before the Lord. Then the anointed priest shall take some of the bull's blood and carry it in to the tent of meeting. He is to dip his finger into the blood and sprinkle some of it and sprinkle some of it seven times before the Lord in front of the curtain of the sanctuary. The priest shall then put some of the blood on the horns of the altar. A fragrant incense that is before the Lord in the tent of the meeting. The rest of the bull's blood he shall pour out at the base of the altar, a burn offering at the entrance to the tent of meeting. He shall remove all the fat from the bull of the sin offering, all the fat that is connected to the internal organs, both the kidneys with the fat on them, the loins and the long lobe of the liver, which he will remove with the kidneys, just as the fat is removed from the ox sacrifices a fellowship offering. Then the priest shall burn them on the altar of a burnt offering, but but the hide of the bull and all his flesh, as well as his head and legs and the internal organs and intestines, that is, all the rest of the bull, he must take outside the camp to a to a place cer ceremonially clean, where the ashes are thrown, and burn it there in a wood fire on an ash heap. If the whole Israelite community sins unintentionally and does what is forbidden in any of the Lord's commands, even though the community is unaware of the matter, when they realize their guilt and their sin is commit and the sin they committed becomes known, the assembly must bring a young bull as a sin offering and present it before the tent of meeting. The elders of the community are to lay their hands on the bull's heads before the Lord are to lay their hands on the bull's head before the Lord, and the bull shall be slaughtered before the Lord. Then the uh, anointed priest is to take some of the bull's head, the bull's blood, into the tent of the meeting. He shall dip his finger into the blood and sprinkle it uh, before the Lord seven times in front of the curtain. He is to put some of the blood on the horns of the altar that is before the Lord in the tent of meeting. The rest of the blood he shall pour out at the base of the altar of the burnt offering at the entrance to the tent of the meeting. He shall remove all the fat from it and burn it on the altar and do with this bull just as he did with the bull for the sin offering. In the same way, the priests will make atonement for the community and they will be forgiven. Then he shall take the bull outside the camp and burn it as he burned the first bull. This is the sin offering for the community. When the leader sins unintentionally and does what is forbidden in any of the commands of, God, of the Lord as God, when he realizes his guilt, and the sin he has committed becomes known. He must bring his offering. He must bring as his offering a male goat without the fat. He is to lay his hand on the goat's head and slaughter it at the place where the burnt offering is slaughtered before the Lord. It is a sin offering. Then the priest shall take some of the blood of the sin offering with his finger and put it on the horns of the altar of the burnt offering and pour the rest of the blood on the base of the altar. He shall burn all the fat of the altar as he burned the fat of the fellowship offering. In this way, the priest will make atonement for the leader's sins, and he will be forgiven. If any member of the community sins, if any member of the community sins unintentionally and does what is forbidden in any of the Lord's commands, when they realize their guilt and the sin they have committed becomes known, they must bring as their offering for the, for the sin they committed a female goat without defect. They are to lay their hand. On the head of the sin, they are to lay their hand on the head 
of the sin off and the slaughter at the place uh, of the burnt offering. Then the priest is to take some of the blood with his finger and put it on the horns of the altar of the burnt offering and pour the rest of the blood at the base of the altar. They shall remove all the fat just as the fat is removed from the fellowship offering and the priest shall burn it on the altar as an aroma pleasing to the Lord. In this way, the priest will make atonement for them and they will be forgiven. If someone brings a lamb as their, if someone brings a lamb as their sin offering, they are to bring a female without defect. They are to lay their hand on his head and slaughter it for a sin offering at the place where the burnt offering is slaughtered. The priest shall take some of the blood of the, the priest shall take some of the blood of the sin offering with his finger and put it on the horns of the altar of the burnt offering and pour the rest of the blood at the base of the altar. Pour the rest of the blood at the base of the altar. They shall remove all the fat just as the fat is removed from the lamb of the fellowship offering and the priest shall burn it on the altar on top of the food offering presented to the Lord. In this way, the priest will make atonement for them for the sin they have committed and they will be forgiven. If anyone... Uh, Leviticus chapter 5 say if anyone sins because they do not speak up when they hear a public charge to testify regarding something they have seen or learned about they will be held responsible I ain't never read that <clears throat> Leviticus chapter 5 verse 1 say if anyone sins because they do not speak up when they hear a public charge to testify regarding something they have seen or learned about they will be held responsible if anyone becomes aware that they are guilty, if they are unwittingly, if they unwittingly touch anything ceremonial, ceremonially unclean, whether the carcass of an unclean animal, whether wild or domestic, or of any unclean creature that moves along the ground, and they are unaware that they have that they have become unclean, but then they come to realize their guilt, or if they touch human uncleanness. Or if they touch human uncleanness, anything that will make them unclean, even though they are unaware of it, but that but then they learn of it and realize their guilt. Or if anyone, though, uh, if anyone thoughtlessly takes an oath to do anything, whether good or evil, in any matter, one might carelessly swear about. Oh, all right, that makes sense. Okay. I got it. Or if anyone thoughtlessly takes an oath to do anything, whether good or evil, in any matter one might carelessly swear about, even though they are unaware of it, but then they learn of it and realize their guilt when they become when anyone becomes aware that they are guilty in any of these matters, they must confess in what they have sinned. Mm -hmm. Says, uh, when anyone becomes aware that they are guilty in any of these matters, they must confess in what, in what way they have sinned. As a penalty for the sin they have committed, they must bring to the Lord a female lamb or goat from the flock as a sin offering. And the priest shall make atonement for them for their sin. Anyone who cannot afford a lamb is to bring two doves or two young pigeons to the Lord as a penalty for their sin. One for a sin offering and the other for a burnt offering. They are to bring them up they are to bring them to the priest, who shall first offer the one for the sin offering. He is to wring its head from his neck, not dividing it completely, and it's to spat, splash some of the blood of the sin offering against the side of the altar. The rest of the blood must be drained out at the base of the altar. It is a sin offering. The priest shall then offer the other as a burn offering in the prescribed way and make atonement for them for the sin they have committed, and they will be forgiven. If, however, they cannot afford two doves or two young pigeons, they are to bring an offering. They are to bring an offering for their sin, a tenth of Ephraim, or the finest flour for a sin offering. They must not put olive oil or incense on it because it is a sin offering. They are to bring olive oil got a lot to do with the holy spirit they must not put olive oil or incense on it because it is a sin offering they are to bring it to the priest who shall take a handful of it as a memorial portion and burn it on the altar on top of the food offering presented to the lord it is a sin offering in this way the priest will make atonement for them 
for any of these for any of these sins they have committed and they will be forgiven the rest of the covering will belong to the priests the rest of the uh, the rest of the offering will belong to the priests as in the case of the grain offering the guilt offering the Lord said to Moses, when anyone is unfaithful to the Lord by sinning un unintentionally. I ain't never read this before. I got to write this down. Leviticus chapter 5, verse 14. The Lord said to Moses, when anyone is unfaithful to the Lord by sinning unintentionally in regard to any of the Lord's holy things, they are to bring to the Lord as a penalty a ram from the flock, one without the flat defect and of the proper value in silver according to the sanctuary shikum it is a guilt offering they must make restitution for what they have failed to do in regard to the holy things pay an additional penalty of a fifth of its value and give it all to the priest the priest will make atonement for them with the ram as a guilt offering and they will be forgiven if anyone sins and does what is forbidden in any of the lord's commands even though they do not know it they are guilty and, and will be held responsible they are to bring to the priest as a guilt offering a ram from the flock, one without the flat defect and of a proper value. In this way, the priest will make atonement for them for the wrong they have committed unintentionally, and they'll be forgiven. It is a guilt offering. They, it is a guilt offering. It is a guilt offering. They have been guilty of wrongdoing against the Lord. The Lord, Leviticus chapter six. The Lord said to Moses. If anyone sins and is, un and is unfaithful to the Lord by deceiving the neighbor about something entrusted to them or left in their care or about something stolen. I ain't never read it. I got to write this down. Leviticus chapter 6. The Lord said to Moses, if anyone sins and is unfaithful to the Lord by deceiving the neighbor about something entrusted to them or left in their care or about something stolen or if they cheat their neighbor or if they find lost property and lie about it. Or if they swear falsely about any sin, such sin that people may commit. When they sin in any of these ways and realize their, their guilt, they must return what they have stolen or taken or extortion or what was entrusted to them or the lost property they found or whatever it was or whatever it was they swore about falsely. They swore falsely about. They must make restitution in full add a fifth of the value to it and give and give it all to the owner on the day they present their gift offering and as a penalty they must bring to the priest that is to the lord their gift offering their guilt offering a ram from the flock one without defect and of proper value in this way the priest will make atonement for for them before the lord and they will be forgiven for any of these things they have uh they did that made them guilty the burn offering the Lord said to Moses, give Aaron and his sons this command. These are the reg regulations for the burnt offering. The burnt offering is to remain on the altar, uh, altar hearth throughout the night till morning. And the fire must be kept burning on the altar. The priest shall then put on his linen clothes with linen gar undergarments next to his body and shall remove the ashes of the burnt offering that the fire has consumed on the altar and place them outside the altar place them and place them beside the altar then he is to take off these clothes and put on and put on others and carry the ashes outside the camp to a place that is ceremonial clean the fire the fire of the altar must be kept burning it must not go out every morning the priest is to add firewood and arrange the burn the burn off from on the fire and burn the fat of the fellowship offering on it. The fire must be kept burning on the altar continually. It must not go out. The grain offering. These are the regulations for the grain offering. Aaron's sons. These are the regulations for the grain offering. Aaron's sons are to bring it. Uh, these are the regulations for the grain offering. Aaron's sons are to bring it before the Lord in front of the altar. The priest is to take a handful of the finest flour and some olive oil together with all the incense on the grain offering and burn the memorial portion on the altar as an aroma pleasing to the Lord. Aaron and his son shall eat the rest of it, but it is to be eaten without yeast 
in the sanctuary area. They are to eat it in the courtyard of the tent of meeting. It must not be baked with it, it must not be baked with yeast. I have given it as their I have given it as their share of the food offering presented to me, like the sand offering and the guild offering. It is most holy. Any male descendant of Aaron may eat it. For all generations to come and his perpetual share of the food offering presented to the Lord, whatever touches them will become holy. The Lord also said to Moses, this is the offering this is the offering Aaron and his sons are to bring to the Lord on the day that he is anointed. Uh, a tenth of an ephraim of the finest flour as a regular grain offering, half of it in the morning and half in the evening. It must be prepared with oil on a gr on a griddle. Bring it well mixed and present it and, and present the grain offering broken in, in pieces as an aroma pleasing to the Lord. The son who is to seed him as the anointed priest shall prepare it. It is the Lord's perpetual share and it is to be burned completely. Every grain offering of a priest shall be burned completely. It must not be eaten. The sin offering. The Lord said to Moses, Say to Aaron and his sons, These are the regulations for the sin offering. The sin offering is to be slaughtered before the Lord in the place the burnt offering is slaughtered. It is most holy. The priest who offers it, uh, the priest who offers it share uh excuse me the priest who offers it shall eat it it is to be eaten in the sanctuary area in the courtyard of the tent of meeting whatever touches any of the flesh will become holy i like that. jesus said my flesh is real flesh man jesus said my flesh is real flesh and my blood is real drink amen Whatever touches any of the flesh will become holy. And if any of the blood is splattered on the garment, you must wash it in the sanctuary area. The clay pot, uh, the clay pot, the meat is cooked in must be broken. But if it is cooked in the bronze pot, the pot is to be scorched, scorched, and rinsed with water. Any male. Any male and any priest's family may eat it. It is most holy. But any sin offering whose blood is brought into but any sin offering whose blood is brought into the tent of meeting is to make atonement in the holy place must not be eaten. It must be burned up. Uh, Leviticus chapter seven say these are the regulations. I'm not going to stop. Matter of fact, yeah, I'm not going to stop. All right. These are the regulations for the guild offering. Leviticus chapter 7. These are the regulations for the guild offering, which is most holy. The guild offering is to be slaughtered in the place where the burnt offering is slaughtered, and the blood is to be splashed against the sides of the altar, and all the fat shall be offered. Uh, and all this fat shall be offered the fat tail the fat that covers the internal organs both kidneys and the fat on the near loins on them near near my time getting twisted on the near loins of the lever which is to be removed from the kidneys. The priest shall burn them on the altar as a food offering presented to the Lord. It is a guilt offering. Any male and a priest's family may eat it, but it must be eaten in the sanctuary area. But it must but it must be eaten in the sanctuary area. It is most holy. It is most holy. The same law applies to both the sin offering and the guilt offering. They must belong to the priest who makes atonement with them. They belong to the priest who makes atonement with them. The priest who offers a burnt offering for anyone may keep its high for himself. Every grain offering break, baked in the oven or cooked in a pan or on a girdle belongs to the priest who offers it. And every grain offering, whether mixed with olive oil or dry, belongs equally to all the sons of Aaron. The fellowship offering. These are the regulations for the fellowship offering. Anyone may present to the Lord. If they offer... If the, if they offer it as an expression of thankfulness, then along with this thankfulness, they mu they are to offer thick loaves made without yeast and with olive oil mixed in. 
Thin loaves made without yeast and brushed with oil. And thick loaves are the finest flour, well kneaded and with oil mixed in. Along with their fellowship offering of thanksgiving, they are to present an offering with thick loaves of bread made with yeast. Along with their fellowship offering of thanksgiving, they are to present an offering with thick loaves of bread made with yeast. They are to bring one of each kind as an offering, a contribution to the Lord. It belongs to the priest who splashes the blood of the fellowship offering against the altar. The meat of their fellowship offering of thanksgiving, of thanksgiving must be eaten on the day it is offered. They must leave none of it till morning. If, however, their offering is the result of a vow or is a free will offering, the sacrifice shall be eaten on the day they offer it. But anything left over may be eaten on the next day. Any meat of the sacrifice left over till the third day must be burned up. If any meat of the fellowship offering is eaten on the third day, the one who offered it will not be accepted. It will not be reckoned to their credit. For it has become impure. The person who eats any of it will be held responsible. Meat that touches anything ceremonially unclean must not be eaten. It must be burned up. As for other meat, uh, as for other meat, anyone. Uh, oh, as for other meat, anyone ceremonially clean may eat. But if anyone who was unclean eats any meat of the fellowship offering belonging to the Lord, they must be cut off from their they must be cut off from their people. Anyone who touches something unclean, whether human uncleanness, unclean man, unclean uncleanliness, uncleanness, yeah, man, uncleanness. That's in. Again, <laughs> it's early in the morning. <laughs> I gotta wake up still, bro. Yeah, I'm sorry. All right. Anyone who touches something unclean, whether human uncleanness or unclean animal or unclean creature that moves along the ground and then eats any of the meat of the fellowship offering belonging to the Lord must be cut off from their people. The Lord said to Moses, say to the Israelites, do not eat any meat of the fat of, car or the fat of cattle or sheep or goats. And the Lord said to Moses, say to the Israelites, do not eat any of the fat of cattle, sheep, or goats. The fat of an animal found dead or torn by wild animals may be used for any other purpose, but you must not eat it. Anyone who eats the fat of an animal from which a food offering may be presented to the Lord must be cut off from their people. And wherever you live, you must not eat the blood of any bird or animal. Anyone who eats blood must be cut off from their people. The Lord said to Moses, say to the Israelites, anyone who brings a fellowship offering to the Lord is to bring part of it as their sacrifice to the Lord. <clears throat> With their own hands, they are to present the food offering to the Lord. They are to bring the fat together with the with the breast as in a wave and wave the breast before the Lord as a wave offering. The priest shall burn the fat on the altar, but the breast belongs to Aaron and his sons. You are to give the right thigh of your fellowship offering to the priest as a contribution. The son of Aaron who offers the blood and the fat of the fellowship offering shall have the right thigh as his share from the fellowship offering of the Israelites. I have taken the breast that is waved and the thigh that is presented, and I have given them to Aaron, the priest, and his sons as their perpetual share from, their, from the Israelites. This is the portion of the food offering presented to the Lord that we allotted to Aaron. Uh, this is the portion of food offering, of the food offering presented to the Lord that were allotted to Aaron and his sons on the day they were presented to serve the Lord as priests. On the day they were anointed, the Lord commanded that the Israelites give this to them as their perpetual share for generations to come. Then these, these then are the regulations for the burn offering, the grain offering, and the sin offering, and the guilt offering, the ordination offering, and the fellowship offering, which the Lord gave Moses at Mount Sinai in the desert of in the desert of Sinai on the day he, he commanded the Israelites to bring their offerings to the Lord. I'm gonna stop there and pick up tomorrow in Leviticus eight. And um and he told y'all we reading the laws and stuff uh, and
It's, it's, these are, I believe, the ceremonial jumps, yeah, and regulations and stuff the Lord was giving them. It's three, the laws consist of three categories back then, and bless God that we ain't got to offer these, uh, these jumps for the bulls and jumps, because I would have been lost. I'm glad we live in the time we live in. Lord Jesus came down. They said, uh, the Bible said, Blessed your eyes to see what y'all see. Because many people which you see what y'all see and hear what y'all hear. And Lord Jesus came and fulfilled that stuff. Um, so we ain't got to worry about sacrifice animal stuff. We All we got to do is put our faith and trust in Jesus Christ. And, and go back and read when the people seeing unintentional, they had to do this and do that. All we got to do is look to the Lord. Uh, put our faith in him but they did all that stuff in accordance to faith with God's word uh, Jesus hadn't came into their picture yet he always been there in fact if they took God at his word in a sense they were, were, were receiving Jesus and did receive Jesus in a sense but uh, we're reading through the Leviticus, Leviticus and uh, we got the ceremonial jumps mostly out the way and coming up next should be some different jumps but uh, explain that tomorrow but everything going to uh, relate to the beginning. So you just, y'all probably got to watch the beginning for the next couple of days to explain the jump, about them jumps. And it makes sense. But besides that, <laughs> I hope y'all enjoying y'all time and God bless y'all. It's a day by day thing, y'all. Uh, nobody perfect. We all fall short of the glory of God. Uh, whatever whatever y'all got going on. Proverbs 3, verse 5 through 6 say, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, submit to Him, which means the knowledge, and He will direct your paths. Uh, you ain't going to know everything, understand everything. I don't. God bless anybody who thinks they're more spiritual than Paul. Paul said, a thing. Paul said I don't understand what I do. Things I want to do, I don't. Things I don't want to do, I keep on doing. Uh, but in my inner being, I delight in God's law, and that's the key right there. Let God's word reside in your heart. And that's the first step. God called Abraham, go to a place where I'm going to show you. Abraham ain't even know where he was going, but he got up and left. Him. God blessed him too. You never get step two till you take step one. Step one is just applying God's word in your life. You know, something will happen, will change. Change will come in your life. Might not be a radical 360, but... Day by day, little by little, how the Lord going to do this, y'all. Little by little. God bless y'all. Y'all keep praying for me. I keep praying for y'all. And I see y'all tomorrow. We pick up where we left off at. Amen.